Unsportsmanlike conduct fouls for each of those players. It is second down. First down. Well, if Barnett has just fallen down, he may have been all right, but <laughs> that was a little act in there. That's the only way to handle a fall, or if you trip, you got to keep running. You know, this is a perfect example of that. Well done. This is Sports Center. Hey, I'm Marissa Bruno. Welcome to a very special Labor Day edition of DSC. And like every year, it caps a huge weekend in the CFL. Right around the time of the posting of this show, the Argos and Ticats are renewing hostility at Tim Hortons Field. And later tonight, the Elks and Stamps meet in the Battle of Alberta. This one features the two worst teams in the West. But don't let that fool you because things are still wide open. There's a log jam in the West even after last night's wild banjo bowl. And the Stamps and Elks are right in the playoff mix. If one of these teams is going to make it, it will be at the expense of the other. Because they still meet three times this season, including twice this week. Calgary has a historic edge in today's game, having won 10 of the last 11 Labor Day Classics dating back to 2012. And they were 14 and 4 against Edmonton under Dave Dickinson, and have won 32 of the last 40 meetings overall. The Elks come into this one on a hot streak, having won 3 of 4 since starting 0 7. Despite that, FanDuel still has the Stamps as a slight favorite at home. You can catch tonight's Battle of Alberta on TSN. Coverage begins at 6 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Mountain. <laughs> The F1 and Charles Leclerc won his second race of the season yesterday in Italy. And things are getting pretty interesting atop the driver standings. So let's bring in our racing analyst, Tim Haraney. Now, Tim, how's it going? Marissa, what's going on? It's good to see you on a Monday. We never really taped on a Monday, but we had a great race on Sunday, so let's get into it. Well, yeah, I mean, it's Labor Day, so all the rules are out the window, buddy. So Max Verstappen still holds a 62-point lead with eight races to go. And that's making things a little uneasy in the McLaren camp. What is going on with their top two drivers? Yeah, it's a good question, Marissa. I mean, who's to say if team orders were put in place before the Italian Grand Prix, we may have seen a different outcome to this one. Maybe Charles Leclerc doesn't come away with the victory, and maybe Lando Norris does come away with the win, plus a bigger bite out of Max Verstappen's championship lead. But all that being said, I mean, this is something that Andrea Stella and Zach Brown are going to sit down and have a conversation about, and I, I think team orders are going to be uh, implemented between Lando and Oscar uh, for the next race and the remaining races. That's if they want to take this driver's championship seriously, which I believe they do because they have a shot here at winning it, at toppling Max Verstappen and coming away with a driver's championship win. And so what team orders does is essentially Lando will be prioritized Oscar won't be, but Oscar will be used sort of as that rear gunner to help defend and keep drivers off of Lando and help cover off uh, pit stop strategies and things of that nature. So that's essentially what team orders would end up being uh, for McLaren in this situation. Now, last year, Sergio Perez finished second to Verstappen in the standings. This year, he doesn't have a single win and Verstappen hasn't won since June. What do you make of what's going on at Red Bull? Oh, yeah, Marissa, it's been absolutely brutal for Red Bull Racing these last few races. And I mean, even if you go back to the Dutch Grand Prix, Max Verstappen running a different floor than what Sergio Perez was running for that race. And the floor of a race car is super important because that's where a ton of performance comes from. And them just not really understanding which one is better. I mean, that was a red flag right there. And then we get to Monza for the Italian Grand Prix and they literally look like they've lost their way with this car. Max Verstappen looks absolutely beside himself when he gets out and talks to the media now. I mean, they just don't know exactly where they have gone wrong. Helmut Marco, um, who's, motor, who's Red Bull Racing's motorsports advisor. I mean, he feels that they do understand where they've gone wrong, but it's going to be a while before they have a fix for it. He's thinking more of the U.S. Grand Prix, so in Austin, Texas, and that's not till mid-October. And Marissa, from now until then, we have two tracks that this car is probably really going to struggle at with Azerbaijan up next and then Singapore following. So this is the moment here where McLaren can... I mean, McLaren can really start biting into their driver's championship lead with Lando Norris. And then also, they probably could come away with the constructor's lead by the time we leave Singapore. Timothy, always a pleasure. You know I love to see you, even on a Monday. All right, thanks very much for having me, Marissa. Really appreciate it. And thanks again, producer Jeremy. <laughs> Back to football and something we've been waiting for for nearly seven months. That's right, NFL season starts this week, in three days to be exact. And Thursday's opener might be one of the best matchups we'll see all season, with the defending champs facing the Ravens. 
So you've got two of the best teams and two of the best quarterbacks. Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson have combined for four of the last six MVPs, including last year when Lamar won for the second time in his career. It's still no surprise that Mahomes is the favorite this year, but FanDuel has Jackson at 15 to one, which is kind of difficult to resist. Lamar was on another level last season, with a career high in passing yards and another 800 on the ground. The Ravens went 13 and four, but we all remember how their season ended. Here's Kansas City from the 19, throwing at the goal line, and it's caught by Kelsey for the touchdown. Mahomes and Kelsey hooked up 11 times in that game. And yada yada yada, the Chiefs won the Super Bowl two weeks later. This year, FanDuel has Casey as the front runners once again. But they're offering something else that might entice Ravens fans. Because they have the third best odds. You can catch Thursday's NFL season opener on TSN. Coverage begins at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 Pacific. <laughs> Fan, it's as good as you can feel when it's 14 to 1. Well done, Darren Baker. First hit, looks over to mom and dad. Oh, that's so wholesome. Tim, not my favorite segment, and yours, why we love sports today. Why we love sports today. And that was Dusty Baker's son, Darren, with a hit in his major league debut. Dusty Baker's son, hmm, why does that ring a bell? Well, we'll remind you, obviously. Thank goodness that JT Snow was aware and got Darren Baker out of the way. Goodness. Darren, what were you doing out there, buddy? What the heck? It wasn't a home run derby. Why were the kids on the field? <laughs> That's stress. It's okay. He got a taste. He got a little taste. That's why he was able to make his first hit. That's it for me today. We'll see you right back in tomorrow at 3 Eastern. No Pacific. Have an amazing holiday.